Well, hey there everyone. So today I'm very excited for what I'm going to be doing because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, and I finally found the material to do it. So what I'm going to be doing today is a 16th century Italian Renaissance inspired dress. Now, if you are unfamiliar with these types of dresses, these are the types of dresses that are in the movie Ever After with Drew Barrymore, which is like the Cinderella E story. Um, that's the kind of vibe I'm going for and have been idolizing for most of my life. So I was at Goodwill and I ended up coming across this big, big, big thing of material and it was the right material type it was there was enough of it it was gorgeous so i ended up picking it up and my plans had started so sorry if you hear my cat purring she found a new toy so <laughs> she's going feral over it um so uh, i did end up picking up a pattern for this it was from this person on etsy um it was just the outside dress pattern not the underdress so i ended up picking that up and so for the materials that i picked up um, that big, big thing of material I picked up for the outside, which is a really pretty green kind of material, which you'll see soon. Um, that's going to be the main, the main show that's happening. And then for the underdress. So I was kind of fighting with what I wanted to do with the underdress. And then I ended up going to Goodwill and I found this white bed sheet, which ended up having a little bit of embellishment on it, which will probably not be able to be seen on a camera but I know it's there. So I ended up picking that up for the underdress and then for the sleeves of the underdress that will pop through the little gaps of the dress sleeve, the outer dress sleeves. I went back to that same um, sheerish white material that I keep going to, um, which again I used for my little draping over in my ghost video and then i also used it as part of the skirt in my christmas dress video so that was all of the materials that i had for this so the first thing that i have to do is print out the pattern cut it out like usual and then i'm going to cut out the bodice material so again for the outer material i have that green and then for the inner material i have for the lining i have I don't know if you can hear that crunching, but that's my cat. I'll just talk over the crunching. Um, so for the lining, I had this just green material that I've used before. I think I used it in my Bilbo vest material um, as the lining as well. So that's just what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna cut out the materials for the bodice um, of both the outer fabric and of the lining. So I will see you after that. So now that those are all cut out, it is time to sew things together. So I have to sew the front bodice pieces together and then sew those bodice pieces onto the back piece. And then I will do that for both the lining and the outer fabric. So I'll see you after that.
that those are all sewn together, we are going to, I'm going to lay the outer fabric and the lining together, uh, right sides together. So all the way around it except for the bottom and then turn it right sides out, poke out them corners, iron it, and then I will tell you the steps after that. So I ended up having to remake the entire bodice top because it was uh, smaller than I anticipated. There was like this much of a gap before it closed and it's supposed to be like all the way closed. So I had to remake it. It's just the same process. I just had to extend the pieces just a bit. Um, so after I did that, <laughs> it is time to sew the straps together and then we can do the fun stuff. It is time to sew the bony channels for the front and then put the grommets in. So there's just two boning here and then the grommets are here and then it'll close and then the top bodice part will be done. Now that the bodice is done, it is time to do the skirt. So there was a pattern for the skirt, but I wanted to use a lot more material than they gave me. So pretty much I just do what I always do and I just cut giant rectangles. Um, and I do have like plenty of this fabric. So I just cut massive uh, rectangles. Honestly, I think just one massive rectangle with the amount of fabric that I have. And then what I did is I hemmed the sides because it is going to be a split skirt so you'll be able to see through. And then I hemmed the bottom and then I did a lazy ruffle attached to the bodice so pretty much I just pinned it on even spots and then as I was sewing it I would ruffle it up and then sew over it so that gives it like the gathered effect. And then the skirt was done. So I'll see you after that. Thank you. 
The last step for the skirt part is to cut it to the length that I need it and then hem the bottom and then the skirt is done and I can move on to the next step. So the last thing that I have to do for this is uh, do the sleeves. So the pattern that I had only had one, uh, one set of sleeves um, and it was just a cup here and here. So I decided to go more Ever After inspired on this um, and do the sleeves that she has when she pretends to be um, her mother, the Countess, Countess. So when she pretends to be the Countess to get her um, servant friend back that was about to be shipped to the Americas. So pretty much what she had was the arm had a little spot here and then it goes down and then it goes like that. So it connects here. So I wanted to do that shape, so I did two of those for each arm, um, and then for the lining I just used the same material, so I basically cut out four for each. And then for the arms I wanted to have a lower cuff, which the pattern did not have, so I just cut out like a little shape um, that came in a little bit for, you know, the shape of my arm. And so I cut out four of those to be two for each arm. So what I'm going to do for those is I'm going to lay them right sides together, stitch all the way around, and just leave a tiny gap um, so I could turn it right sides out and then iron it. And then I'm going to top stitch all of them just so it like stays a bit more flat and everything. So I'll see you after that. Now the last and most tedious thing to do for this outer dress is to put about a million grommets in it. So the grommets that I need is to tie them together, but also to put grommets to tie them to each other and to the strap. So you'll see how many grommets I do and it's quite a lot, but yeah, after the grommets are done, I just go ahead and I tie them all together with ribbon and then this outer dress is done. So I'll see you after that.
Now the actual last step of this gown was I ended up adding some cord in between the bodice top and the skirt just to give it a little bit of embellishment and like it, make it look a bit more royal. So I just hot glued that all the way around and then this dress was done. <music> Now the second element of this dress is the underdress. So I was kind of fighting with what I wanted to do because the dress and ever after, even though I'm not, not making a replica, um, I'm just doing it kind of inspired by that, um, is all sewn together so there isn't really an underdress. And then I was trying to fight with what I wanted to do. Um, so I kind of just ended up making an underdress that wasn't attached to the outer dress. So they're two separate pieces. So basically what I did is I had a pattern for a shift um, and I just kind of made the pattern much bigger than it was. So, what was I saying? Yeah, so <laughs> what I did is I extended it so I made it longer because this is going to be full length, um, not just like ended the knees like this shift kind of had. So it's going to be full length and I want it to be like a full skirt. So I wanted to make sure I had enough material on it to make it like a full skirt. So I took the pattern, the center was on a fold, and then I added like this much more to it so I can have it nice and full and then I made it the length that I wanted it to be so I did that for both the front and the back and then for the arms in that sheerish material I ended up doing uh, just rectangles but massive because I want the poofiness so I can pull some through on the little openings for the arms getting comfy back there it's getting not comfy um, so I made them massive. So so to start sewing this together, um, pretty much you take the two, the front piece of the shift and the back piece of the shift, and then you sew it together at the shoulders. I'm gonna do a rolled hem around the neckline and the arms all the way around so that I can make a little channel to put a string through um, to cinch it up. So after I made that, I just took some twill tape and I put it through and then I'm able to tie a just bow in it just to get it whatever length I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna see you after all that. That, that is all cinched up and everything it is time to sew the sides of the shift together so I'm just gonna kind of measure out where I want the sleeves to start so I just kind of pinched it and I was like okay I'll sew up to here and so then I just sewed it all the way down um and then after that I just did pinking shears because I didn't feel like doing a uh, French seam or anything so I just pinked the edges uh, so it wouldn't fray as much and then after that, I went ahead and I hemmed it. So I'll see you after all of that. Now the last step for this is to do the arms. So pretty much I just have massive rectangles. I sew them together down the thing for the... <laughs> I sew them together down the arm just to connect them and then I need to gather them. So I gathered it on the top to make it fit the sleeve hole that I'd made and then what I did is I folded in the um, 
I folded in the end of one so that I can make another channel for an elastic to go through. So it'll just cinch on my hand here and then the rest is, can just be poofy. Um, and that is after I surged all of the edges around because I didn't want to deal with that fraying. So then I fed an elastic through the wrist and then I gathered up the top and then I just went ahead and I attached it to the shift. And then that is all and I guess I will see you in the final look. Here this bad boy is. So, <laughs> this is what I was working on last week when I ended up deciding to do the reversible corset. Um, and decided I needed more time. So I think this turned out actually really good, way better than I was expecting. There's tons of string on me. Um, <laughs> and I definitely think I'm gonna have to wear this to the Ren Fair. I swear I have like five outfits. I'm gonna have to go many times just to get my wear of these outfits. Otherwise, I have nowhere else to wear them. So this is definitely gonna be one. I'm gonna walk around kind of like royalty just because I can. And that is the plans that I have. <laughs> but yeah, I think this turned out really good. Um, if I have any criticisms, I could have had this bodice part be just a little bit longer. Um, but I followed the pattern and it ended up just being a bit short. So if you do do the pattern, lengthen it if you feel like you need to <laughs> but yeah i think the poofy white worked out really well i think the under just worked out well everything just worked out well <laughs> so i am very excited to now have this in my closet for a rainy day anyways yeah i do feel as if i am in ever after and that's the only thing i've really ever wanted in my life so i'd say my mission is accomplished i don't know how to go up from here so in the coming weeks, I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a bit more crafty things than sewing things. I'm probably going to end up doing like an alternating week of crafty and then sewing, crafty and then sewing. Uh, we'll see how that goes because I have a lot of new crafty things to try out that I got for Christmas and then after Christmas um, that I need to, I just want to, I want to play with. So I might make some videos on them. 
Um, but yeah, as for sewing, I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing, but I'll do something. <laughs> it's pretty much what the goodwill gods give me when I go. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, I guess we'll figure out what I'm doing next week because I don't even know. So anywho to do, if you liked what I did, go ahead and like and subscribe. I post most Saturdays, mostly at noon, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.